Oh, it's that woman again. Good morning, all. Good to see you. So Dave's told us it's a week to go. A week, in a week's time, you're all going to be sitting there going, now, did I leave the oven on or not? <laughs> We're working through our Advent series, and of course, Advent is a time of preparation. And I suppose my question is for us all this morning. Do you feel prepared? <laughs> Look on Sarah's face would suggest no. <laughs> Do you feel peaceful about it? Or do you suddenly go, I haven't bought anything for auntie such and such, or I haven't put the sprouts on yet, or do you feel like everything is just on the edge of being out of control? Most of you know I work for City Mission. Um, This is our busiest time of the year. And boy, this last week has it been busy. Um, We had a week ago, um, I spoke at Queen's Road Baptist Church in the morning and I went back to the mission to um, speak at our cafe church, which meets once, once a month on a Sunday. We called it a Christmas party and we ended up with nearly 60 people there, which was brilliant but stupid at the same time. Because um, every time Andy and I and the kids sat at a table, somebody else came in and we moved again and we moved again. I think we ended up in the car park. Then on Thursday, we had our Cafe Church carol service, which last year, I think there was about 35 to 40 people. This year, we were 70 to 80 people. God is good. And the most amazing number is the one Terry alluded to um, when we talked about the fact there's going to be a distribution here tomorrow for the giving tree. Um, In the fact that this year, to date, it seems to change by the hour, we've got 1,212 children on the list who will receive toys this year. That's 520 families. That's significantly more than ever before. And so thank you again, if you gave, if you prayed, if if you're gonna help, if you have helped in any way, thank you. We've got five distributions coming coming up in the next three days. And it's gonna be mad, it's gonna be chaos. But we know a God is in control. People look at the week that we've had and they go, are you all right? Yeah, I'm tired, but I feel so kind of exhilarated by what God is doing at this time. Some, look, some people look at it and go, it's just chaos. But it is chaos. But in the middle of that chaos, in the middle of the uncertainty, in the middle of the storm, where would Jesus be? Smack bang in the middle of it, wouldn't he? He'd be there. And the knowledge that he will be there, he is there, is what makes me feel peaceful. The other day at the mission, Andy was there, and there were several of us, every time we cleared something, a door would go, a knock on the door, a doorbell or a phone, and some more would come in, and something else would change. And Sarah would go, oh, the numbers have gone up again, can you go and wrap this? But we haven't got this. Door would knock, somebody would bring some more in. On Friday, I sent these details out to our trustees and said, please pray, because we're about 160 selection boxes short. So every child that gets a bag at the mission will also get a selection box and opportunity to see Santa. And we're 160 short. Within half an hour, somebody had texted, gone, sorted. Because God knows. And God tells his people, and that should make us feel peaceful. But I know life isn't that simple. One of my favourite things um, about our Christmas at home is our nativity set told you before that even now Remy at 13 loves finding Jesus in all the paper wrapped up and putting it all out especially you know finding Jesus um, at the carol service on Thursday we watched the video if you get a chance to look it up on YouTube it's by um, uh, some American actors called skit guys skit guys and it's called sticky Jesus um, and it just talked that there was one called sticky Jesus and one called Jesus is I think it's missing Jesus And the idea of missing Jesus was that they'd lost the Jesus out of the nativity. And so they'd replaced it with all these different things, but actually they, you know, came to the conclusion, you can't replace Jesus. But actually I love our nativity set because it is just, it just brings everything together, doesn't it? It's that idea that maybe it's those memories of doing nativities at school and seeing your kids do them and all the different things that we've just, it all summed up in that little image. And it feels so peaceful, you know, the, the, the cows just laying there peacefully and the baby quiet and the shepherds just leading on there. You know, it all, it's all so perfect, isn't it? 
Have you ever been to a farm? My brother used to work on a farm. Um, Andy and my brother had been up to the farm on Christmas Day. It's not like that. We might, we might have made it look beautiful because of what we've read in the Bible. And I'm sure that one occasion, for a moment, it was beautiful. But actually, life isn't always that simple. We've just sung the most peaceful ca uh, Christmas carol there is. Although my words were slightly different to what we nearly sang. Um, Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. So why was that one scene in that farm or barn or, or cave or whatever it was, why is that one the peaceful one? Whereas all of the ones before and all the ones after probably were more about moving and barring and smelly things and disgusting things and all the rest of it. The difference is Jesus. The difference is Jesus. We all long for the peace that makes our lives easier, the peace that just gives us that <sighs> feeling, a feeling that everything is going to be okay. We know we live in a world that's lacking in peace. Talk to Howard and some of his journeys recently. You know, he's been first hand. And Paul, when he went out to different, different countries in, in, in Eastern Europe and beyond, you see first hand some of the chaos that we thankfully don't really live in, but we're aware of. We would love peace in our lives. People are full of worry and anxiety. Relationships can be full of conflict and stress. But that's when we let Jesus in. And Jesus can make the difference. We talk a lot about Jesus being the hope at Christmas. But he's also our peace. And it is only through the arrival of that baby, the arrival of the Christ, that we can ever really, really obtain peace on earth and through us somebody speaking at the um, house of commons in the Ca in canadian parliament back in the 40s said this there will never be agreement at the peace tables of the world or rest in the individual heart until the prince of peace reigns supreme in the hearts of men wouldn't it be amazing to hear that in our houses of parliament rather than the <laughs> that is usually there until the Prince of Peace reigns supreme in the hearts of men. And so that's what, where are the candles? I thought we had candles earlier, never mind. I go to so many churches, and some have candles, some don't have candles. Um, the Advent candle, the peace candle, as part of the Advent crown, that's what it's all about. Part of the Christmas story, part of the Christmas message, that this Jesus, this baby, this Lord of Lords, King of Kings, would bring peace. And I just want to very briefly look in four different directions, if that's okay. I want to look upward and rem rem remind us that Jesus brings peace for us with God. I want to look inward, that Jesus can bring peace for us with ourselves, inside ourselves. Outward, Jesus brings peace with others. And fourthly, Jesus will bring peace on earth. We can look forward to a time when there will be peace. So firstly, Jesus brings peace with God. We read in Romans 5, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that just isn't a natural thing. It didn't just happen. We don't naturally be at peace with God. The Bible tells us we've been separated by God. We know that through the sin of the world. And it's through being justified by him that actually that we get to be peaceful with Jesus. When God first sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, he sent Gabriel with a message of peace to a woman that was about to be terrified, confused. Her whole world was going to change. We read in Luke 1, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. 
Mary was troubled with, I'm sure she was quite troubled with the idea of an angel standing in front of her. You know, it's probably not a daily occurrence for her. But then the angel spoke peace and assurance to her, telling her not to be afraid because God was with her and God had found favour with Mary. How did Mary find favour with God? The only way any of us do. She had faith in God. She had faith in what we now know as the Old Testament scriptures. And she had faith in that fact that, that prophecies that a Messiah would come. Like so many Old Testament characters that we, we read of and hear about so often, they had faith in a Christ before Christ had entered the world. God also sent an angel to Joseph, Mary's husband-to-be. And the angel told Joseph in Matthew 1, she, Mary, will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus actually means salvation. And Jesus was given that name because he was the promise, the one who would bring us peace with God by saving us from our sins. Even when John the Baptist was born three months before Jesus, John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied about John. And in that prophecy, he spoke about um, how John would go before Jesus, preparing the way for the one who would bring us peace. In Luke 1, it says, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, to guide our feet into a path of peace. And we know that Jesus did this through the cross. Jesus was born into a world to die so that our sins would be forgiven. Those who believe in him would be able to spend eternity in heaven with him. Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. So that's the first, um, if I'm honest, the most important thing, that that idea of peace at Christmas in the Advent story, the thing it reminds us is that Jesus brought and brings peace for us with God. The second thing, inward, Jesus can bring peace with ourselves. Sin not only separates us from God, but sin can separate us from our own being. We become conflicted, constantly fighting what's going on inside against maybe the outward appearance of what we're trying to live. We need to find that inner peace. And Jesus came not only to bring peace with God, but also that personal peace within ourselves. Many of us know the story of cinnamon. Uh, cin cinnamon? <laughs> I'm very tired. Simeon, even. This is not a cookery show, I promise. There's no cinnamon. Simeon. God promised him that he would see the Messiah before he died. And wouldn't you know it? Holy Spirit moved him to go into the temple courts just as Joseph and Mary were bringing the infant Jesus to the temple. We read in Luke 2. Sovereign Lord, as you promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A wonderful example of Jesus bringing personal peace. Anybody got a bucket list? Anybody got a list of things they want to do before they die? It's the new thing, isn't it? It's the trendy thing to do. I kind of like the idea of having a list of things I want to do while I'm still here rather than before I die. But actually it's things we want to accomplish before we finish our lives here on earth. And it would appear that Simeon had one thing on his bucket list. He wanted to see the Messiah. He wanted to see the coming king before he died. When he did, he saw Jesus. That was all he needed. He praised God saying, you, you now dismiss your servant in peace. It would be brilliant if that was the only thing we had on our Christmas list this year. To see Jesus before we die. Simeon embraced Christ and was at peace within himself. When we put our faith in Jesus at the centre of everything we do, 
the hope of peace with God and the hope of peace in ourselves becomes stronger. Philippians 4, we know, says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace is available in and through Jesus. John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, I'm not saying that flippantly. If you're going through struggles, if you're going through tough times, I'm not just going, ah, yeah, Jesus is the answer, although he is. Tough times are tough times. We all go through tough times. But the one thing I can promise you is if you lean on Jesus, he's there. He will bring you some form of peace this Christmas. The third thing, Jesus brings peace with others. We live in a world of conflict. Many of us live in relationships of conflict, friendships of conflict, partnerships of conflict, at work, at home, in families, in neighbourhoods. We all would love to live that kind of that life that maybe television portrays sometimes. But actually sometimes times are tough. But actually even through tough times, Jesus can make a difference. You can imagine when Joseph found out about Mary. You know, it almost sounds like an episode of EastEnders, doesn't it? 15-year-old girl pregnant with another person's child. But back then it was horrific. In a way, for Mary, for Joseph, for Joseph's family, the shame, the ridicule, the embarrassment. But actually then we read this in Matthew 1. After he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that conversation with his family? We forget that it's not just Mary and Joseph. Joseph would have had to go home and say, by the way, Mary's going to have a baby. Probably not the easiest conversation he was ever going to have. But so did he believe the angel. So did he believe the God's message to him that he felt peaceful enough to deal with. It. Mary was pregnant with, an, with um, someone else's child. Joseph normally would have broken the engagement she may have even been killed, stoned to death for the embarrassment and for the shame. But instead, that angel, the arrival of Jesus, was bringing peace. It brought peace between Joseph and Mary. And we believe peace between Mary and Joseph's family and the neighborhood and the village. Because actually, that's what Jesus does. And we all go through challenges in life. Relationships, work, family. But actually we need to ask Jesus in, the Prince of Peace, to come and bring some peace in those relationships. Relationships are two-sided. There's always two people, two groups involved. And we need to pray for Jesus to bring the peace of reconciliation in our hearts. And we live in the city of reconciliation, don't we? We need to pray that Jesus can bring that peace in our heart that helps us to take the first step forward. But also pray that he will put that same feeling in the people or situation from the other side so that you both may move forward together. I probably told you the story before that I was speaking at an event once in a, a church service where it was a church Andy and I were attending. And in the music group, two of the guys, music groups are always, I'm so glad you're on your own. And might be lonely, but you can't fall out yourself, can you really? But there was always tension. And on this particular week, there was tension between the guy who was playing the guitar and the guy who was controlling all the knobs. And the guy with the guitar kept turning his own controls up because he wanted to be louder than everybody else. He couldn't hear himself but the guy on the control was turning him down because he could hear it was louder than everybody else. And it blew up. Just before the service in the practice, they both kind of went, 
and just walked off in different directions. He was like, oh dear. Then the service started and they had to be all professional and they had to get on with it. And um, guess who was talking on, you know, holding short accounts and not killing each other and all the rest of it. And as I was speaking, I saw the guy with the guitar who were there, obviously, was sitting all here uh, listening to the talk, and the guy at the back who was on the, on the control panel, they both at the same time stood up. Nobody else could see this because they were all looking at me. And I was watching that, the corner of my eye, the guy go that way and the guy go that way. And I was thinking, when I get to the middle, they're going to kill each other. <laughs> said, I had no idea because they'd got so angry with each other. But as they walked closer and closer and closer together, they just hugged each other. Because God had brought peace in both of their hearts. God had probably pointed out maybe some of the things they'd both done wrong and pointed out actually the good in the other person. And it ended, ended in a hug, it ended in reconciliation. And those people were able to move forward together. And that's what Jesus can do. Ephesians 2.14, for he himself is our peace. Who has made the two one and destroyed the barrier, the, the dividing wall of hostility? Jesus came to break down barriers, to bridge the gaps, to bring people back together. Christmas is a good time to do that, to restore peace in our damaged relationships. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule our hearts, since as members of one body we are called to peace. Jesus brings peace with others. And finally, Jesus brings peace on earth, we believe. We know it's not now. We know there's still conflict throughout the world. There's something like 90% like of the days since Jesus came, there's been war somewhere in this, in this world. Something ridiculous like that. But actually, it promises that there will be change in the future. Change within um, the world itself. We, we as one will be brought back to Jesus when he comes again. Even the lamb and the lion will lie down together. Animals, humans, the planet itself will all become a place of peace. That's the hope of Jesus coming again. So to conclude very quickly, I just want to ask you today. The reason Jesus brings peace with God, peace with self, peace with others, and peace on earth all goes back to the cross. Without Jesus shedding his blood on the cross, there would be no peace. But without Jesus being born at Christmas as the proof of all those prophecies, there could be no cross. Last week at Queen's Road, um, I offered anybody that was there a nail. Not a big nail that would have got, been the size of the ones going through Jesus' hands and feet, but just a small nail with some ribbon tied on it to hang on their tree or to tie somewhere visible in their house that they might remember that at Christmas it's all about the cross. Because without the pain of the cross that Jesus went through for each one of us, Christmas is pointless. And without Christmas, the cross is impossible. So if you get a chance, go and find a nail at home, go and find uh, a screw or anything that you can just have a visual image of the reason Christmas is here. The way God brought peace through Jesus was by him dying on that cross. And maybe put that nail somewhere on your Christmas tree or on your mantelpiece or I don't know, hung on the door behind the loo, anywhere where you can see it, so you can be reminded that actually it was all about the cross. That's what brought peace. So my final questions for you this morning is, do you have peace with God this morning? Jesus died on the cross for all of us. And it's so easy to get mixed up in the chaos of life and forget he means me too. Do you have peace with God? Do you have peace with yourself this morning? Are you struggling internally? I just want to remind you that verse from John 14. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
Just remember the image from the prodigal son. When he's gone off and he's done everything that he wanted to do and he's caused chaos in his own life, he's brought sadness to his family. When he turns around and walks back, what's the father doing? He's looking for him. The father's not away partying or doing his business or doing whatever he does every day. He's looking for the son, for the broken son. And if you're troubled this morning, trust me that he's looking for you. He's just waiting for you to turn around and walk to him. Because as you walk to him, what did the father do? He ran to his son with the best robe, with the best ring, with a party. So if you feel you don't have peace with God this morning, if you don't feel you've got peace within yourself, turn around because he's looking, he's waiting, he's ready to run towards you. Do you have peace with others this morning? Do you have relationships that you need to pray for? Get other people to pray for this Christmas. Because Christmas is a great excuse to make contact with people, to bury hatchets, to mend brokenness. And we know that God, through prayer, can bring that peace. Finally, the final verse, Luke 2.14, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Those words of promise that still ring in the air this Christmas, as they have throughout the centuries. Let's remember that as we worship and adore the Lord Jesus, our Saviour, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Okay, we're going to stand together, and we hope that the music group at the front here doesn't fall out with himself.